Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be taking a look inside the pulp and paper industry. And this is a special one for me. I spent a lot of years supporting pulp and paper across the Virginia and the Carolinas. Love the industry. Very excited to have with us Hussein Alkaloff, who is the capital project manager at International Paper. So welcome, Hussein. Hey, well, thank you. Hey, so what, what mill are you at there at International Paper? Savannah Mill. Okay, Savannah, that's, I have not been to that one, but uh, uh, have to get down there sometime. I'm sure it's beautiful in that area. It is. It is actually we're we're lucky. It's one of the the uh, the uh, mills uh, within within the IP fleet that is located in a beautiful city. Oh yeah, no doubt, man. I I, I support a lot of the mills, like I said, across the the southeast, and I always enjoy going to the pulp and paper mills. And yeah, there may be there may be listeners out there who don't know about this industry, Hussein. So. Maybe could you give a little brief overview of what uh, the pulp and paper industry covers? Yeah, I can speak for international paper. Uh, like you said, Savannah Mills, one of international paper's uh, uh, fleet of mills. Uh, IP is the largest pulp and paper uh, manufacturer in the world. Uh, they employ about uh, 60,000 employees uh, worldwide. We have mills in the US, Canada, uh, China, Turkey, and I believe Poland. Um, but uh, primarily the business serves or produces uh, printing paper, corrugated paper, uh, pulp, packaging boxes, uh, lids, hygiene products, and uh, you know the, the paper even goes into, into the furniture and countertop uh, manufacturing, uh, flooring, and other uses. Uh, and like I said, uh, Savannah is located in a beautiful prime location uh, in, in a city, in the heart of the city of Savannah. So we contribute to the smell a lot, and uh, we uh, clean up their water. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. how long have you been at that IP mill? At uh, Savannah since uh, May of uh, 2017. <clears throat> very cool. Very cool. So, I mean, since, you know, 2017, you, you've been into pulp and paper. What's been the most, the most significant changes that you've seen over the last, say, three to five years? Um, I can speak uh, for IP from what my research and what is available publicly. Uh, IP has been executing programs and projects that mainly focuses on reducing cost, uh, become more environmentally friendly, uh, reduce competition, and balance the needs uh, against future opportunities. Uh, also, IP continue to focus on balancing supply and demand on a domestic and international level, which is growing at a strategic pace, albeit the industry is, is morphing, changing, and developing, making this industry go through um, changes that have never been seen before due to the different sustainable application that paper is being applied to. Mm -hmm. And as far as uh, your question about uh, the what do I see uh, uh, coming over the next five years, this paper industry is, is, is not going away. Um, you know, looking back at the sales since uh, 1960s, uh, paper as a commodity did not lose value. Uh, demand, for, demand for paper has been on a trajectory since, since the 60s. Therefore, I see demand and sales continuing to rise for many reasons. Uh, to name a few, primarily for now, uh, since the past uh, year and a half, Ever since the pandemic, uh, online sales uh, is something that uh, we've seen a spike uh, in the U.S. primarily. Uh, consumers spend about eight hundred sixty-one million uh, uh, one billion dollar uh, 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 in twenty uh, twenty, which is up by forty-four percent since twenty nineteen. Therefore, if you buy a package online, most likely about seventy-eight to eighty percent that the package will be delivered in a in a paper box. Yeah, no doubt that that B to C that's driving that industry, right? I mean, that, 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 like you mentioned, how many people are on Amazon or just buying packages online, right? And just think about all those little boxes that show up on our doorsteps now. You know, they, they come from the industry that you serve and, and serve at a high level. And I mean, that, that demand is definitely going up. Correct, yes. Very good, very good. So sounds like an exciting time to be in the pulp and paper, man. So you're enjoying it? I'm loving it so far. I, I really like what I do, uh, especially the project management aspect is it's an ever challenging, ever changing uh, uh, um, position. It, it, uh, every day is a new day. No doubt. No doubt. I know when we were brainstorming before you were talking about data collection uh, with the machines and the projects you were working with there. So maybe could you give us a little insight about how that data collection is being used to make those better decisions in the moment? Yeah, as uh, as people say, data mining is the new gold gold mining. Or mine it, don't bury it. 
right? You've probably heard that uh, quite some time or a few times now. Oh, yeah. uh, it applies to any fast-paced production environment. Uh, we use software to collect data for analysis, the proof concepts. You know, the data tell a story. And, and not only for the maintenance folks, uh, you know, useful in troubleshooting uh, activities or, or them performing their day-to-day -day PM activities, but rather data is used to you know, state a business case uh, uh, as we develop products to prove uh, a concept to management. Uh, you know, why use this alternative versus the other and, and back our recommendations with, with, with credible data. Right, right. That sounds good, man. I mean, and, and, you know, technology is changing so much too, Hussein. You know, you hear the, the industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing and the IIoT and all those those types of buzzwords that are out there. I'm sure you're very familiar with them. You know, how are you seeing that impact quality? Because uh, that technology is definitely raising, you know, that level of uh, capability within these plants. So just curious, any any ties to improvement in quality as that technology has advanced? Yeah, we continue to look for, you know, uh, what other sister mills have been doing, uh, you know, cons consult with our corporate technology uh, uh, team, um, engineering and, 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 and partners to finding technologies to employ our, our mills that will either reduce our cost, uh, increase our quality, or automate, automate our, our processes or equipment. You know, improvement projects are mainly are more prevalent, prevalent uh, is on the paper manufacturing side, uh, the, the money maker. Uh, you know, there's not much, or I shouldn't say there's not much, but there's not a lot of focus on the utilities departments, the fiber generation. It's more on the the money maker, the paper machine. Right. So you know, uh, uh, paper making is a science, and and you could go to school in that. And companies and corporations are exploring avenues to to reduce cost, improve quality, and produce product that is repeatable, sustainable, and competitively priced. Like. Uh, to be able to do that, and machines that were built in the 40s and 50s have to be retrofitted with technology that to, to make that happen. Right. Now, the, are those the types of projects and things that you work with as the capital project manager there? I mean, trying to bring that technology onto the, the machines that have some age on them? Yes. Yeah. Retrofit old machines because uh, um, the corporation would want to not spend money to all new machine, but retrofit the existing machine with, to, to be able to either increase uh, the throughput uh, or make a, you know, a, a different product line or what have you. I'm, I'm sure that can be stressful. I used to do a lot of service work with the uh, pulp and paper industry. I know a lot of that work is done during machine down days and outages and things like that. So I'm imagining the level of coordination. If you want to bring in new technology, you know, and implement it, proof test it, and be ready to, to bring it online when that machine is, is called to, to run. I'm sure that the pressure can be up at times. Very much, very much, yes. That's fun stuff though, man. I mean, I, I, I thoroughly, the, the, the machine down days, I remember those the most. We, we would have eight, 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours to do maintenance that we were doing. And uh, it was very clear, we better be done with that maintenance when they were called to, to press go on that machine. Mm -hmm. Better or they're they're running you out. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. So maybe talk to you. We love to talk and, and share with our listeners about headwinds to, to let people understand about what's out there. Some are from a capital project manager standpoint, what headwinds do you run into that people could learn from? Yeah, I call them challenges. Maybe uh, okay. some headwinds. Yeah, um, you know, nothing comes easy, right? And especially when you're working with with people. Uh, with differing uh, personalities, age groups, and experiences. Project management is not particularly difficult. It all hinders on, on the project manager's approach, demeanor, conduct. It's, it's, uh, it's what you do and how you lead your team to achieving a goal because none of your teammates uh, report to you directly, right? In, in a projectized environment, uh, uh, you hire people and you employ people to... to achieve a goal, right? Or achieve a vision and, and it's short term. Uh, so there are, you know, three constraints to any project. Uh, uh, um, you know, obviously the schedule or time constraint, the scope and the budget. And everyone from the project team to upper management would be comfortable when project does not meet scope, right? Or our time or budget. Uh, there's a lot of risk associated with developing and executing any project. As far as headwinds or, or, or in my interpretations uh, as challenges uh, are common to every project that can uh, three constraints I, I mentioned 
its lack of, cle lack of clear goals and definition of, of the success criteria, you know, asking all the whys, uh, the whats and hows. You know, once you have a clear picture, then you could, you could frame up your, your scope and know what you're executing. And then uh, lack of efficient and effective communication across team members and stakeholders, particularly challenging in an environment where there's a lot of turnover in personnel, management, especially for projects that span over multiple years, right? If you can imagine people change, uh, people have different ideas, business change. So, so they, 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 there will be some gaps there and, and, and risks associated with all that. And then in that inadequate skills or not the right skill set selected for the project team. Um, you know, lack of accountability of, of, of team members, uh, uh, scope creep, uh, limited engagement of stakeholders, you know, all, all of that I mentioned and, 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 and a few are, are very common happenings in projects. And I've witnessed uh, how each can impact the project and cause the project to shut down or severely impact budget and schedule. Sure. I get, and I, when I was thinking when you were going through a lot of those, those points, you know, from a schedule scope budget standpoint, uh, you know, not having clear definition of the goals, communication. I'm picturing you as like the, 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 the primary point person to create alignment with a lot of different peoples and different groups to understand, you know, what's at stake, what's, what's expected, and to, to ultimately get there as a project manager. Uh, so that, I guess that culture and creating that alignment between multiple teams is uh, pretty important. Yeah, yeah, certainly, because, uh, you know, at an early stage of development, uh, not a lot of people have any stake in that idea, right? Uh, they haven't seen it up, come up to fruition. Right. They only know what they want, but they don't know how to get there sometimes. Right, exactly, exactly. Now, you, you talked earlier about the increase in demand that Pulp and Paper has seen, particularly since the pandemic, you know, more online sh shopping, that B2C environment is just going through the roof right now and, and as as consumers are, are, are buying differently, just that behavior is shifting. So, you know, with COVID, you know, how has that actually impacted the pulp and paper industry? What have you had to change from operation or, or, or quality or just standpoint in, in, in general, just to run a paper mill? You know, like, like any business around the globe, uh, everyone suffered from the setback. Uh, you know, IP was deemed, thankfully, IP was deemed as an essential employer uh, because of the products we make and we continue to fully operate uh, during the pandemic. It was uh, tough and challenging, um, but uh, we, uh, you know, hopefully we're coming out of the weeds or the, through the thick of it. And we continue to follow CDC guidelines to ensure the safety of our team members is a number one priority. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hats off to you guys. I mean, you're doing a great, you're definitely essential. Uh, all, all of us here at Eco SY definitely believe that, and uh, you know I know it hasn't been easy, but you guys are are doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. You know, and Hussein, we try with with the this with the show here to inspire people and to give them insight to these industries. And pulp and paper is such a, a, a awesome industry to consider. And maybe speak to the young person out there that wants to just thinking about it that maybe they know about a paper mill that they're thinking about studying and trying to enter it what advice would you offer them up all right um uh, first advice is prepare to get dirty and smell it <laughs> no no I, 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 on a serious note uh, we all know uh that the paper industry smell uh but that's the smell of money as we call it um uh um, IP promotes, uh, um, you know, uh, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm still with IP is because they promote a healthy work-life balance. Uh, if, 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 you are, if you're looking for an opportunity to make a difference, uh, that's to say there's, you know, room to work on projects that will improve throughput and quality. If, if that excites you, if uh, you'd like to work on maintenance projects, a replacement of old outdated equipment uh, with new uh, building structure, structures, uh, office buildings, substations, automating, uh, robotics, um, uh, you name it. Anything can be done. Anything uh, uh, can be applied at a mill, at an older, relatively old, older mill. Uh, if you're interested in a fast paced work environment, uh, structure and challenge, uh, then IP might be the right fit or place for you. Uh, I work with, with great people uh, uh, with a track record of, of accomplishments. I've had the pleasure and fortune to to have met and worked with many awesome people so far. So, absolutely, absolutely. 
Well, that that's great advice for for people that want to come. It's definitely a fun industry. You you mentioned so many different things, all the way down to robotics, and people may not think about that opportunity when you're thinking about pulp and paper, but it does exist. And uh, you know, I one thing I would just remember so much about all the different meals I would go to is just the the team atmosphere, uh, and and every meal and and how that worked and. Uh, you started off about the uh, the advice you mentioned about the smell, and I, I but I always called it the smell of money too, my friend. That was it. You know, it's it smelled good, and uh, I have some funny stories around that. But uh, we'll save that for another time. But uh, sure. how about debunk something, man? So the people think about pulp and paper, they think about all there's things that just pop in your mind, and you talked about getting dirty. So maybe other there's some uh, some myths or some stigmas out there that people may have that you like to just knock out the park here, man? Yeah, a couple, uh, a couple of things. Uh, pulp and paper industry is, is uh, antiquated. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd say uh, certainly not. Uh, with the amount of product that is being produced and, and you know, the market growth that only Savannah had <laughs> seen in the past three years, uh, I'm, I'm certain that uh, portrays a different story. Uh, if you still want Amazon to deliver your boxes or the packages in the box uh, that are that you know and, and that, that offers a solution that is that is um, environmentally friendly, then our business needs to focus on quality and efficiency and continue offering competitive quality product uh, to achieve that. Uh, our innovation department uh, uh, are working hard to empower mills around the world with technology to do to, to do just that. So the business is not you know antiquated or, or going away. So uh, uh, another another um, myth that I'd like to debunk is uh, 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 pulp and paper is not environmentally friendly. I, I'd also say certainly not. And the paper industry has taken great strides to reduce waste and increase efficiency over the years. Uh, IP promotes sustainable forest management policies, uh, not to mention that inventories on private timber lands have increased nearly by you know seven percent over the last few years. Uh, some waste products like linen lignin are being used to generate power. In fact, close to 70% of the waste is turned back into energy in, in this industry. And about 65% of the fiber brought to recycling center gets reused. Uh, so energy and conservation are both very important to paper mills, not only because of uh, their environment, environmental impact, but also because it increases profitability for the mill itself. No doubt, no doubt. That's good. That's, I, I was not aware of a lot, a lot of those statistics that you just went through. And, uh, but you're right. I mean, it, there's so many things from an environmental standpoint. It's not just a paper mill either. I mean, just think about the loggers and the people in the on the forest management side of it uh, that are feeding it. And it's just, it's good for the environment. So it's, uh, you know, thank you for debunking some of those who saying that was really good stuff, man. Good stuff. Well, I'll tell you what. We call it Eco S Y. We always like to wrap up with the Y Hussein. We've we really gave us a good insider look at the pulp and paper industry. Hopefully, you you, you got a lot of people curious and wanting to go check out uh, some some paper mills and, and learn more. But let's get to the why here. Why should the people consider pulp and paper as a wonderful career? You're definitely finding a lot of joy in your career path. So just uh, what would be the why here? So from my experience, uh, the work and life balance is, has been great. Uh, I get to focus on the things I, I really enjoy at work and at the same time focus on family, uh, 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 school, work, what have you, outside of work. And uh, you know, it offers opportunity to work, to work with great people, uh, very knowledgeable team members uh, locally, globally, and on a national and international level. And as an employee, uh, you're all first to try new opportunities uh, within the organization, um, no other company that I have worked for uh, in the past that promotes this as openly as as, as IP does. Uh, you're always encouraged to look uh, to at, at your next level move, uh, work with managers to attain your dream career, let's say, or dream job. Uh, uh, that is always uh, uh, you're always welcome to do that, and and uh, it offers a challenging uh, work environment that is also very rewarding. And if you're looking to work with fun team members, uh, then, then look no further. Look at the phone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I can attest, I'll back you up hundred percent. It's a wonderful industry. I hope our listeners really uh, listened here and, and, and got a value that I feel like you really brought at a high level. Hussein, thank you for giving us that inside look. It was really fun to, uh, to hear from you from the capital, uh, stamp 
project standpoint uh, and just get that inside uh, feedback around the, this wonderful industry of pulp and paper. Likewise, I'd like to thank you and your team. It's been, it's been great. Absolutely. You have a wonderful day, sir. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 